Nice. Um, in this session, I will talk to you about the work we do on the Dutch Gender Gap Project. Um, and I will focus on what we do to help new editors uh, find their way on, on Wikipedia and what we do on outreach. Uh, since this presentation um, is recommended for newbies, I'm pretty curious uh, about you in the room. Um, and we do not have much time, so we can not do a complete introduction session. But I have one question for you, and maybe some people would like to answer. Um, how many edits have you made on Wikipedia right now? Any volunteer? Anybody who likes to answer? There's a mic in the phone, in the room. Maybe Netta? Do, oh, yeah, there is one. <laughs> 2,000? 20,000. Anyone else? So? Thousands of edits. Are there newbies around too? How many edits have you made? Who made lesser than 1,000? Wow. There's one, two maybe. Well, thank you. So we have newbies, but uh, most of you have made lots of edits. But let's think a little bit more about a distinction. Um, does it count how many edits you have made? Is it that important? Uh, for me, in 2012, I was a newbie, and it occurred to me that it was important. Because every time I would meet new Wikimedians, or meet Wikimedians, um, they would ask me the same question, how much edit have you made? And when I would reply that I was new and just started, uh, the conversation would stop. And it felt like I wasn't important or I didn't count because I wasn't uh, among one of the top editors. Um, I think what would have made me feel more welcome if the next, there would be a next question and people would ask me, okay, well, welcome, you're new. And do you have any questions? Can you help me? Because, of can I help you? Um, because I think it's very important to make people feel welcome. It will encourage to uh, continue your work on Wikipedia. Um, because I think the first edit can turn into a next edit and people can become pretty good members of the community. Um, in this talk, I will ask you to share your experiences. It, would be, it will not be just me broadcasting about the Dutch Gender Gap Project. Um, so let's learn from each other and listen to each other. I'll start. Since 2015, the Dutch Gender Gap Project aims to attract new members for the community, and we try to get more articles about women on Wikipedia. Still no slides. Because we do have a, Dutch, a gender gap on Dutch Wikipedia, it's obvious that uh, among the existing community, there are not enough editors to help close the gap. So the gender gap work group decided to find out what's happening. Where are the people that might want to join us and why they are not on Wikipedia already? We decided to interview some new editors and also editors that are uh, working on Wikipedia for many years. And we found out some main points that either help people and motivate people to edit Wikipedia, but also points that stop people from even starting. And uh, what we found, and uh, Netta already told, and Rosie too, was um, uh, it's about confidence. People are afraid to post uh, wrong information or they are afraid to ask beginner's questions. People have heard from bad experiences from others or they might even have had bad experiences themselves. People are not confident. They feel like they do not know enough about a, a subject and especially not enough to even write a Wikipedia article about it. People have no Wikipedia skills, so how can you start then? Um, people do not have enough time to edit. It's all pretty common things that Orneta and Rosie also said. Um, and there was a group that just didn't know where to write about. Yes? 
right side. This is USB-C. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to get a conversion from the front. Okay, end. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll manage without slides. Um, luckily, there were also points that uh, motivated people. And these were the meetups in real life. People love to meet each other, work together, and help each other to write on Wikipedia. And being able to add missing information on subjects that they think it's important to share with the world is a great motivation. So these were things that we found out among our community, the Dutch Wikipedia, and here's the part where you guys come in. I'd love to hear some things that you may have found out within your community. Is there anyone who wants to share some things that help or maybe stop people from editing? No one? That will give us a lot of time for a coffee break then. <laughs> yes? Hello. Is there a microphone? Is there a mic? Yes. For Reem? <laughs> uh, people, oh. they are scared of the text when they are, they are editing, when they are clicking the edit, they see a lot of stuff that they don't understand. Yeah, yeah. the codes. So, the codes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's one of point. the things. Yeah. Think. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. So that's that's. Um, I'd like to respond. Um, people are afraid of the codes. It's it's re it's it is difficult, but that's why the the um, visual editor was developed, and that's why you can pick up cheat sheets um, at the help desk here, just around the corner at the registration desk. That in Osa, they're in Swahili, they're in English. Um, if you send me your translation in your own language. I make sure it has the same layout, and we'll do all the translation, and, and we'll put it up on comments for you if you do the translations. So that's the what you see is what you get, editor. Makes it far more easier for newbies to go on Wikipedia and share their knowledge. So that's actually a solution to the code problem. We do in Germany, Pick closer, pick closer. We do in Germany monthly meetings for women, like women edit, um, for to help each other to edit in Wikipedia. And in Germany, we have to prove edits from new editors and we can help each other because there are um, more um, people, more women who can do this and um, do um, things which another offline. Okay, there's actually a solution to the real life ma uh, edits. We have time for one or two more? So uh, one thing that I've seen a lot and actually experienced when I first showed up to Wikipedia is that the only people that I interacted with were people who were telling me I was doing something wrong. Yeah, exactly. And otherwise, yeah. uh, Wikipedia kind of seemed like a quiet desert. Yeah. Just the last one. Uh, I also wanted to say that numbers are a huge thing in the Arabic community. So everybody brags about how many edits they have. Yes. And um, when I was just starting as well, I thought that this should be my target. Um, so yeah, instead of, um, for example, adding all of the article I have in one click, I would just split it into as many clicks as I have <laughs> so that I can get more edits because this is yeah. w what I was told. Yeah. So yeah. it is indeed a problem. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. 
I have to continue because otherwise there's not much time left. Um, well, we found out some points that motivate and we also had some points that uh, make people hesitate to contribute to Wikipedia. And the Dutch gender gap group, we tried to take some obstacles away. Um, we know that our group places high value on meetups in real life. So it's a perfect opportunity to work together, share, uh, share experiences, and it can also help to see bad accountants into a different perspective if you share your story and maybe even be able to have a laugh about it. So what we did, we started organizing meetups. It would be one night a day uh, meetups where we focus on editing Wikipedia because we try to learn them how to edit and hope they will stay around. Um, but what we experience is that you know, one day meetups, they, we just didn't have enough time to actually learn people how to edit Wikipedia. And it often resulted in a lot of frustration and articles being reverted, and that didn't motivate our new editors at all. So um, another important aspect that we found is that um, one day meetups um, do not give the, give the opportunity for people to connect to each other. And this is one of the main things that motivates our group, connecting and working together. But if you are on a one day meetup and you just try to, to learn how to edit Wikipedia, you do not spend time on talking to each other and etc. So what we decided to do was uh, the same thing as you just told me you're doing in uh, Germany. We decided to organize monthly meetups. We have our Wiki, Wiki Fridays, it's in Amsterdam, and we have Wiki Saturdays. And these are uh, uh, meetups open to everybody. You do not have to register. We do like that, but it never happens. Um, and uh, we offer a safe and steady environment for people to join us and work together. And it's, it, it gives the opportunity for people to get to know each other. And they know when and where to join us because we plan these meetings way ahead. And, um, well, it's a great way to get to know each other. And this works for our group in the Netherlands. Um, the other obstacle we talked about was the fear of posting wrong information or po asking beginners questions. Um, what happens is if you post a question on wiki it's out there in public and not everybody feels comfortable with that especially beginners um, what we did is try to offer a safe uh, space and I saw it in the uh, uh, previous presentation too we opened a, a closed Facebook group uh, we have about um, 120 members at the moment and those are members who are very active Wikipedians and also people who just started. And we just asked questions and people asked them to take a look at the article they are working on. And actually we also um, help to uh, keep articles that are nominated for deletion. We p the people will see it and post it in the, the Gender Gap Facebook group and we work together to improve these articles. And it, it's a very, it often gives very positive results. Um, about beginners questions, we got questions from our beginners like, is there a manual for uh, editing Wikipedia? Um, in the beginning we said, yeah, well, you can find everything on Wikipedia. It's there, there are user manuals and tips and tricks. <laughs> hey, <laughs> people, if you start a Wikipedia, you, you, some people manage to find the information, but what happens, there are a lot of links, and they click on the links and they will lose their way and they cannot find what they are looking for. So we were lucky enough to have Lodewijk, and he uh, wrote an, a manual for beginners and it gives all the basic information on how to edit Wikipedia. So we're very happy with that. Still no slide. <laughs> um, people were looking for inspiration on how, uh, where to write about, of what to write about. And um, we created, it was a actually a very simple solution like Women in Red also did. We created red linked lists and we added um, uh, links to other Wikipedia versions, uh, language versions, if they were available. And it actually helps people who have less time to contribute to um, uh, yeah, make translation of an existing article. So it helps also people who have less time. 
um, well, these were some things that we have created in order to uh, get some obstacles away. Again, is there anyone who wants to share their experience? Do you have any solutions to for the obstacles that new editors find? Reem, <laughs> where's the mic? <laughs> Oh, there. Hi. This Hi. Is, uh, it's not more a solution. I'm just trying to think. I mean, uh, the solutions that you're talking about, it's more like women that already have time and maybe a little bit of leisure to add in the editing. So I'm thinking, why not go to, co especially in indigenous languages, if you're going to attract women, you're going to go to o partner with organizations that are already organizing women for issues that are, are of concern in their communities. In that way, they are already meeting. In that way, there's already a common cause. Then introduce Wikipedia and the benefits to their communities. Because some of the issues you're talking about, this kind of woman would not even have, you know, uh, uh, even the, the, the capacity to think about that, especially if you're thinking of making this more inclusive. Yeah, thank you. That's very valuable, yes. Yes. No slides. Is there anyone who likes to share some solutions they gave? Netta? <laughs> Run. <laughs> Uh, sometimes during editathons, uh, we bring newcomers and we bombard them with information. We are like, you can do this, you can do that, just check out that, check out this. That's too much information, way too much information yeah. for yeah. them to process. Yes. So what we could do is to just sit down and watch them edit. And just in case they encounter some problems, we can like tip in and say that, oh, this is how you can do it better, instead of just giving a lot of information and making them feel overwhelmed and feeling that it's yeah. a very difficult thing. Yeah, this is also what we do during Wiki Fridays, Wiki Saturdays. It's a great way. Also, another thing that we do in Egypt, uh, whenever we have a workshop or an editathon, we decide if if we have a specific like audience. So, for example, if they are going to translate, we developed manuals that are completely um, just only for the groups that translate yeah. from English into Arabic or from whatever language into Arabic. So we had we had also to design our own manuals in in, lang in our own language, which is Arabic because the ones existing do not address our, need at our needs at all. Great. Great, thanks. Okay, I'll continue because we're running out of time. Um, so we, found we, dis we thought of some uh, ways to uh, work around the obstacles that new editors encounter. And um, now we also wanted to reach out to new editors. Um, and since they are not to be found in the Wikipedia community, we started looking outside Wikipedia. And we found organizations that share our goals, and they, were, uh, th they really like to organize workshops, Wikipedia workshops. Um, but what we have learned is that sometimes these organizations they uh, tend to value the enthusiasm of their supporters larger than it is. And every now and then, we ended up with zero participants in the registration forms, or maybe one or two. And then we would decide to cancel these um, meetings, th these workshops. And these are things that just happen. And my advice is at least if you reach out to organizations and start with organization of a workshop, at least um, also inform them that it might be the case that the, their network might not be as enthusiastic as they might think they will be. Um, and it, that's just it is. We are lucky to have found Adria as a partner. They have a great network and uh, women who like to edit Wikipedia with us. So we are just very lucky. Um, what we also did to try to reach new editors was last year, during um, around International Women's Day, we did a targeted Facebook um, campaign. And uh, what we saw that we had the best uh, results on a group in which we were promoted to expand stops. It was a surprise to me. I expected that, that translation might win, but that was the second place. Uh, it was just the first time we did that, and we want to, uh, to repeat it again in order to get some better evaluation on that.
Uh, these were all things that uh, aim on new editors, but also we want to stay in touch with, with the Wikipedia community, the existing Wikipedia community. So what we also did to stay uh, in touch with we, what we do is we organized challenges online. Uh, like the 100 Wiki women and the women you never met. And what we see in the, the past few years that the group who joins us in these challenges is growing. So that's actually very positive news. Um, yeah, I wanted to also, now I have to continue, sorry. <laughs> I, w I wanted to give you time to share some information, but we're running out of time again. Uh, I have one last cool thing, and Reem already mentioned it. Um, this May, we organized our first uh, women tech storm. It was part one, it was a pilot, and um, our mission was to get more uh, women and non-binary people involved in tech. And we had only 20 uh, spots available for this um, uh, tech storm, and to our big surprise, we received um, uh, 99 uh, registrations from, from participation, for, from participants, sorry. Um, I think the key success for this number was that the fact that we um, uh, organized it for women only and we promoted a safe space environment. But another thing was uh, w we clearly indicated that this uh, tech storm um, was for newcomers. So people who registered knew that when they entered this uh, tech storm, they wouldn't be the only one asking beginners questions which is actually normally something that people are afraid to do. Um, I think I have to stop here. Are there any questions or people who want to comment? Yes, over there. Hello, everyone. I think the campaigns that might be done can still be exclusive, considering that there are many women who, are, who can't write, who can't read. So probably bringing uh, into the environment digital storytelling, where a person can use vernacular language to share their own stories, and then have those that can read and write, uh, translate them into other languages could help. Yes. I agree. Anyone else? No, then I, I think I will give the stage to Asaf. Thank you very much.